There is a war going on between the evangelicals, a civil war. And I think it's quite interesting because the way this plays out is going to change the world forever. Within this video, I will be talking about how this war began, who it affected, where we are now, and who has died because of the civil war between evangelicals, along with where we currently are as a society when it comes to the civil war of the evangelical church. The first clip I'm going to show you goes back before 2015 when it was not legal across all states for gay marriage to exist or to be recognized. Yes, we're talking about gay marriage. So this first clip clip will be a great representation of what the world looked like and the responses from evangelicals at the time when people in the LGBTQ community wanted to get rights for marriage but had yet to attain it. So if something like this may offend you, turn up back now because if you proceed forward, you have been warned. All right, let's take a look at pre-2015 argument points from evangelicals. Here we go. First of all, you have to ask, what is this for? What is sexuality for? And so if we believe that God designed this, then that means that there's a, there's a purpose to it. And the complementarity of a man and a woman in a marriage relationship, fidelity, one flesh, uh, that stands behind the whole reason for the design of sexuality. It's not just an individual matter. It's uh, something that has to do with binding those two together in connection with future generations and with the generations that have come before. Hmm. So it's kind of a big picture discussion about why do we even have sex? Well, mm -hmm. what, what's the purpose here? And the other problem is what a lot of our gay and lesbian neighbors assume is that we have marriage and we're wanting to restrict this marriage and we're not wanting them to have it. So mm -hmm. we're wanting to keep something to ourselves. What we're saying is not, we don't want you to be able to get married. We're saying that same-sex marriage is impossible uh, right. based upon what uh, sexuality and what marriage is. So it's not that we're trying to disappoint our neighbors. We're saying this is, this is for the good of human flourishing, yeah. uh, and we love you. Uh, that's the reason why not only do we say uh, that we think there's, there's some restrictions for you, there's some restrictions on us. Right. Uh, in terms of what uh, what this looks like. Yeah, and there always have been. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's an important point. I think people also need to understand two things. One, we say it's not harming anybody. It's me in my bedroom. Well, the current debate about marriage explodes that myth. This is not private. This is pressing upon culture as a whole. Mm -hmm. And because they framed it in civil rights language, mm -hmm. it means that it, it, this is the, the greatest farce ever. You can go ahead and practice your religion. This has nothing to do with you practicing your religion. If this is a civil rights issue, and if us not doing weddings for homosexuals or not hiring homosexuals becomes violating civil rights, then it is not conceivable that the church will be unharmed by this. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that myth is exploded. This is mm -hmm. not private, this is public. The other thing is that all legal decisions are based on principles and established precedent. And right now the principle is, you know, sort of the, the Beatles mentality, all you need is love. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, you, you, if marriage is based on popular opinion and who loves each other, the 50-year-old man and the 12-year-old boy, the man and his daughter, mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. And everybody say, oh, red herring. No, not once the principle is established. So this is not private right, right. and it doesn't stop here. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we ought to, even challenge the principle that just because something doesn't harm that that takes it out of the realm of morality. Yeah. If you cheat yeah. on your wife and she never finds out about it right. and you lie about it, is, is it wrong? And I think most people would say yes, because yeah. lying is inherently wrong. Yeah. And then the other thing is is realizing that a lot of times harm does not reveal itself immediately. Right. You know, if you if you if you if you are violent towards someone, that's an immediate effect. But right. you have to look at the long term effect of the harm. And that was the argument points from evangelicals before 2015. It wasn't the fact that mar that marriage just you know was only for straight people. It was the fact that it would hurt the church, so they said. And the morality argument was that if we made same-sex couples legal, 
Then a father and his daughter, as Amendment said in the video. How ridiculous is that argument point? This wasn't that long ago, people. I'm just here to give you the facts and for you to make your own conclusions. So if I want to point out that they said our L, you know, our gay and lesbian friends or neighbors, they were very polite when and very understanding and respectful when referring to people who enjoyed same-sex marriages or same-sex relationships or felt the urge because they had an attraction for someone of the same sex. They were very polite about that, but also very firm and also pretty out there when it came to using their argument points for extremist beliefs, right? Well, then came 2015 and the Supreme Court ruled that you cannot limit someone's marriage status based off of who it is they are marrying. Let's watch that now. It's a piece of history that I think will be remembered a hundred plus years from now as a positive move. But you may disagree. And if you do, let me know down below and why. I would love to continue this conversation. So let's check it out now. Marshall, I'm from the Heritage Foundation in Washington, D.C. And we're here to call on the court to allow this important debate about the future of marriage to continue in America. I'm Shane Vinnie Cohn and I'm an LGBT activist. I'm hoping that the Supreme Court rules in favor of love and giving the entire nation marriage equality. has issued a decision today, but it will not end the conversation about what marriage is and why it matters for America. It's just completely overwhelming in like the best way possible. Just one. <laughs> in the places where marriage, where, where the American people had the opportunity to vote on this, they strongly voted to retain the understanding of marriage that has been that in our law throughout our history. So this is an unfortunate curtailment of, the, of that uh, democratic process by the Supreme Court today. This moment. As you saw in the video, there was both positive and negative responses. There was a cheering crowd, but then others thought, well, you know, this gets the government too involved into personal beliefs. This is going to harm the church, blah, blah, things of that nature. After 2015, extremist evangelical groups started to emerge. And these groups absolutely felt like the gay community were their enemy. At this point, they were no longer friends and neighbors, as mentioned in the first video, but they were the enemy against God and salvation. And as the Bible states, it is a sin to be in a gay relationship or a lesbian relationship. If it's not a man and a woman, it's against God. It's blasphemy. Blasphemy is against God, right? That's what the Bible says. But do I personally believe that? No. If you want to be in a gay relationship, or if you want to be in any type of relationship, if it's healthy for you, go for it. If it makes you happy and it makes the other person happy, that's all that matters. Remember, this is just a documentary, not my personal perspective on the matter, okay? No personal attacks against me. Thank you. So as we move forward and the evangelical churches start to develop a in-group, out-group scenario where people who are of the LGBTQ plus community are the enemy against God, for it is a sin to be in one of these types of relationships. And now, like I stated, they're no longer friends across the aisle. They're no longer friend, neighbors and, and, and friends. They are the enemy. And here is a great example 
of some of the extremist behaviors that were being shown at the time against people in the LGBTQ community. Let's play that clip. Oh, the Bible Belt. The Bible's again it. God's again it. I'm again it. In a and recent sermon, the Baptist pastor, Charles Worley, suggested gays and lesbians should be imprisoned behind an electric fence. In a few years, they'll die out. Do you know why they can't reproduce? So your little son starts to act a little girlish. Another pastor, also in North Carolina, recently apologized after he told parents to slap children they suspect of being gay. The second you see your son dropping the limp wrist, you rock over there and crack that wrist. They shun the love of God. Reverend Billy Ball supports his colleague's view that homosexuality is a sin. Sodomy has always been an abomination, both Old and New Testament has always been, in God's view, punishable by death. In God's view, punishable by death. In God's view, punishable by death. Welcome back. Yeah, if you're not a little horrified by what you just saw, then uh, we need to start having a different discussion about psychopathy. Because literally in that video, we seen where preachers were saying, strike children who are showing signs of being gay. We've seen people who are gay by the word of God sh should be killed. It should be murdered. And this type of thought manifested itself at this time. Although it may have been beforehand, it really started to gain traction at that time and it continued to gain traction and that traction continued to evolve and grow and grow and grow and grow and it started to spin out of control to extremist evangelical groups because now they had an enemy all because gay people wanted the right to be married just like you so what ended up happening at this point i'm getting ready to show you a news clip and I want you to watch this news clip with an open mind with everything we've just talked about. Even though it does not take place in America, you're going to see a part that talks about evangelical Western groups. And you're going to see how evangelicals from the Western countries, like here, hello, here in America, have led to direct deaths. Punishment by death to people who are gay. This is literally the psychological development of hate at its finest. Other examples of this, of course, would be Hitler and so on and so forth. If you want to learn more about psychological development of hate, there are courses available at your local university and college. Let's play that clip now for you. I hope you enjoy and I'm sorry for the extremist behavior you're about to see. But I think it's important for the message. Here we go. President Yoweri Museveni has signed one of the world's toughest anti-LGBTQ laws, which includes the death penalty. Same-sex relations are already illegal in Uganda, as in more than 30 African countries. But the new law goes much further. The move has drawn Western condemnation and could risk some of the billions in foreign aid that Uganda receives. It stipulates capital punishment for so-called serial offenders against the law and transmission of a terminal illness like HIV AIDS through gay sex. It also decrees a 20-year sentence for, quote, promoting homosexuality. Activists have vowed a legal challenge to the law. Ugandan activist Dilovi Papadi Kwagala said the law could do harm beyond the country's borders. This is bad news. It's not just for queer Ugandans, but for queer people across the African continent. Ghana has been literally on it for months as well. You know, um, Tanzania, Nigeria, all of these other countries that I'm also not mentioning. It's just like they have been waiting for this. Museveni has called homosexuality a deviation from normal and urged lawmakers to resist imperialist pressure. He had insisted lawmakers tone down parts of the law, but his ultimate approval was not seen as in doubt. Anti-LGBTQ attitudes have hardened in conservative Uganda in recent years, in part due to campaigning by Western evangelical church groups. In conservative Uganda in recent years, 
in part due to campaigning by Western evangelical church groups. You are arresting us for literally doing nothing, for simply existing. You know, but where are we supposed to go? How did we become refugees in our own countries? Welcome back. What you just saw is a real news article from Uganda, where if you are gay now, you get punished by death. If you are supporting of the LGBTQ plus community, it's a 20 year sentence in jail. Capital punishment at its finest, and I know you saw the part where it said it was funded by evangelicals. West, Western evangelicals, they have invaded other countries. I'm using the word invade, but this goes back to the original point of the civil war in evangelical churches, because we're about to get to that. So stay on topic here. We have not changed from the initial topic. So there is proof right there that evangelicals are personally responsible for the deaths of people who disagree with their ideology. This is where extremist groups and extremist behaviors come into play. When you prey upon those who are lesser than you financially, educationally, whatever the way it may be, and you bring them stuff and you get them to believe your ideology, it can and will result in death by spreading your hate speech, which by the way is exactly what these evangelicals did. By, they went there and they provided services, but they also provided their perspective on life, which is fine, but they pushed the narratives that being gay is a punishable offense worth, that's punishable by death. It's an offense against God. And now, like we saw in the previous clips, you know, it's, yeah, it's punishable by death from the Bible, and now it's happening in today's world. So let's get back to the Civil War. This is what the Civil War is about, by the way. If you haven't figured that out by now, then um, this video might not be for you, maybe a little over your head. But, so the Civil War is about letting gay people into the evangelical church. Is that a good thing? Is that going to happen? Well... In 2019, you know what? I will let the next video explain it for me. Watch this next video and I'll meet you back on the other side. Here we go. The United Methodist Church or UMC is a mainline denomination in the US and also around the world. Some denominations like the Southern Baptist Convention are just in the United States, but the UMC isn't. Churches worldwide can influence the decisions made at the general conferences. A special conference was called in 2019 over the issue of homosexuality, and although the majority of US churches wanted to change the existing UMC position stating that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching, the vote of the worldwide church decided to leave it in. However, although this is the official position, many of the bishops of the church and annual conferences which are like regions, have not been enforcing the position. In the end, because of this issue and others like the view of the authority of the Bible, a large number of UMC churches, often called the traditionalists, decided they wanted to leave. And the 2019 special conference also passed a rule that allows them to do so relatively simply until the end of 2023 and keep their property. All right, welcome back. As you saw there, there is a division within the church. Extremists who say, no, the Bible is clear. No gays, no lesbians, no trans, no queer, no none of that. The Bible is clear, and if that's in the church, it's blasphemy against God. And then there's those that are more reasonable and say, hey, a sin is a sin. Yes, the Bible does say it's a sin against God, but you're not kicking out other people for masturbating to women on the internet, for having three songs, you know, for literally any other sin. From the Bible, no, you 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 are absolutely not prohibiting people from any other sins in the Bible from going to church. Why is this the sin that's limiting people from coming to church? So this divide is huge, right? And it is definitely making an impact in the evangelical world because you have extremists on both sides. I'll say that to be fair, who are demanding that they are right. And that they are demanding their right by the Bible and the book of God and their beliefs. 
I've already shown you how evangelicals are directly responsible for murdering people in the LGBTQ community. So to say that this is not a subject worth covering or to say that this is not vitally important is wrong because the message they're putting out there can be changed so that people aren't mercilessly murdered for being gay. So this is why it's important to be in support of churches in the evangelical circles to show them that you, know, you have to support the ones who believe that it's okay to be gay. Because yes, it is a sin in the Bible, like I said, but it's one of a billion sins. And none of the other sins are held to this standard. Why is this one put up on the pedestal? Literally, there couldn't be greater need for acceptance here because people are being murdered throughout the world for their sexual desires just because they want to be with someone of the same sex. That's the civil war that the evangelicals are in right now. The split, the divide is happening. And the extremist groups are funding p political influences across the world to continue spreading their agenda. That is corruption at its core. And I'm calling it out for that. Because you are taking people who are in a ne desperate need of things. We need de we're desperate in need of clean water. We're desperate in need of good food. We're desperate in need of housing. We're desperate in need of shelter. And you're saying, I'll provide this. But you have to listen to my beliefs. And you have to listen to what I personally think about the way other people should be treated. And through the influence of money, and through the influence of goods, and through the influence of necessities, they have influenced parts of the world that needed help. And now people are being killed just for being gay. Let that sink in again. I'm going to repeat that again. People are being killed for no other reason than the fact that they are gay. All because evangelicals are spreading the belief that homosexuality is a sin worth death. The Bible says all sins are weighted equally. So doesn't that mean that the guy who masturbates online should be sentenced to death as well? What about the people who like to eat seafood or hoofed animals? Shouldn't they also be sentenced to death by the same logic that you're providing evangelicals? What about those who had sex before marriage? What about women who speak up in churches? What about those sins that are in the Bible as clear as day? If all sins are weighed equally, then shouldn't they be sent to death as well? The civil war is happening now. And it's very important that we take this serious. And it's very important that we make sure the right side wins this war. Because if the wrong side wins this war, there will be more deaths that are related in direct line to evangelicals funding hate and destruction and literal death because of people's sexual tendencies, sexual preferences. I will leave you with one last video before I'm going to end this. And the last video I'm going to leave you with is as followed. I'm going to let the Pope explain what he thinks about people who are gay and lesbians and whatnot and what he believes should happen. Here we go. Somos todos hijos de Dios. Y Dios nos quiere como estamos y con la fuerza que luchamos cada uno por nuestra dignidad. El ser homosexual no es un delito. No es un delito. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distinguamos pecado por delito. Pero también es pecado la falta de caridad con el prójimo. ¿Y vos cómo andás? Cada mujer tiene que tener una ventana en su vida donde pueda volcar su esperanza y donde pueda ver la dignidad de Dios. Y ser homosexual no es un delito, es una condición humana. ¿Y los estados? Welcome back. 
and I'm glad that you watched that part of the video because although it is a sin, as the Pope said, it shouldn't be a crime. You shouldn't be sentenced to death. You shouldn't be spending 20 years in jail or prison for your sexual preference. Please share this video with those that you think need this message or can relate to this message or maybe in support of this message. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. This has been Blind Justice and this is my report on the civil war taking place within the evangelical churches.